Hi, everyone. Welcome to Dishing Drama with Dana Wilkie Uncensored. We have officially moved to Patreon. Here's a sneak peek of Dishing Drama with Dana Wilkie. Hi, you guys. I hope you had a fabulous week. I did. So today, we are going to continue our Secrets of Hollywood series, where I'm going to open Pandora's box. And today I'm focusing on reality TV producers and what they don't want us to know. (laughs) One show in particular I want to focus on, which is the old Bad Girls Club that was super popular. It was probably one of the most, oh my goodness, really pushing the envelope on reality TV and what is ethical and what isn't. And I just really wanted to tackle that today because it really does call out a dark side of Hollywood, which is, you know, what is reality stardom really about? And, you know, what do the producers have to give up from a soul perspective in order to do their job? Because some of them have reported really struggling after being reality show producers because of things that they've been forced to do in the line of their job and being good producers. And I thought, what an interesting switch to take it from their perspective than, you know, the reality star being the victim. I also wanted to contemplate in today's episode, what is the impact on these reality stars when they go off their shows? Um, especially shows like Bad Girl Club, because like what these women go through on that show in particular is pretty horrific. And I was like, this has to have some, you know, damaging effect on them. It just has to, (laughs) you know? Um, So today I'm, I'm going to teach you about what reality producers have admitted doing how they tackle that in their minds. And then we're going to talk about some pretty extreme examples of where reality TV has gone too far because it is Hollywood and it's a big part of Hollywood these days. Now, I've had some further news about ABC. I know a lot of you are really curious about that. And I did put that in my Lana Del Rey confessional video that is coming out on Saturday. So make sure you watch the first five to 10 minutes of that uh, confessional video to get that tea because I know you're dying for it. (laughs) I just wanted to tell you where to look. I wanted to reward the people for being interested in Lana Del Rey because it's a topic that might not jump out at you as something you really want to necessarily look into or learn about. But as always, when you do the deep dive, you find out all these shocking things about people and you start to go down the rabbit hole and you're like, I can't believe I didn't know all this. I can't believe I wasn't interested in this. This is amazing. Um, So anyway, I'm really excited about that uh, confessional video. I think it's going to really shock you. Um, Azealia Banks is obviously intertwined in it. And so is Russell Crowe, oddly. (laughs) So I'll just throw that out at you to get you excited. So I guess what's triggered me in this topic today is, as you guys know, I have a family relationship with uh, Patrick Clark, Velveteen Dream, and he's had some difficult times. And I wondered, you know, in his environment, being in the WWE, being, you know, made into an instant celebrity, put through the machine, you know, had dolls made about you and all this stuff. And then you're just abandoned, you know, after you've sort of gone on this adventure, but in the process of going on this adventure, it's kind of a mind fuck, right? You have all these people manipulating you for a period of time. Now I'm not saying I don't love reality TV because I do. I appreciate that these producers are exploiting these human beings for my entertainment. But I mean, I do have to look at it, right? And accept it for what it is, not lie to myself and say, you know, everything's hunky-dory over here. I know that I need to move on and I will, but it's hard for me to sit there and pretend like everything's great and hunky-dory when it's not. Who is hunky-dory? 
I'm going to go a little highbrow here. You know, the ancient Greeks used to have three genres of drama. They had comedy, satire, plays, and they also had tragedies, okay? Their comedy mocked men in power for their vanity or their foolishness. Their tragedies had themes of love, loss, pride, abuse of power, and tumultuous relationships between men and people in more powerful positions, in their case, gods. And then satire plays were short plays that were between the bigger tragedy uh, drama (laughs) that was inserted in, and they would make these like different in this, in their case, fictional stories that like were kind of fantasy. I mean, it sounds a lot like the formula for housewives, honestly, right? <laughs> Think about it. We have these little moments that are like satires where we see the people's lives and we get to fantasize about their existence in some weird way. And then they surround the rest of it in mocking people in love or loss of family or whatever. It's like the same uh, formula. They also loved heavy events of boxing, wrestling. Uh, You know, they had big events around athletics, murdering animals, chariot racing, hunts, gladiator fights. And there was like a big, very popular event that they would take the rebels, outlaws, slaves, and military captives, and they would have them be ripped apart in front of a large crowd by animals, and they would watch them like run for their lives. And people really got off on seeing this. In fact, here's a quote from the Seneca Letters. In the morning, they throw men to the lions and the bears. At noon, they throw them to the spectators. The spectators demand that the slayer shall face the man who is to slay him in his turn. And they always reserve the latest conqueror for another butchering. The outcome of every fight is death and the means are fire and sword. This sort of thing goes on while the arena is empty. So the Romans had their own kind of reality TV, (laughs) right? They had the bestaris that would be unarmed people thrown in and fed to wild animals, okay? And, And these people were not necessarily just criminals. They were, but some of them were just people who owed rich people money. They also loved exotic animals being murdered in front of them too. They would really cheer loudly if it was an exotic looking tiger or lion that would be slaughtered in the arena by a hunter. Sometimes the emperors would get involved and they would do a presentation and kill an animal. So this was giving them some sort of power, although some people frowned upon it because they felt that was like low class of the emperor to do. Cassius Dio said, in the circus, there was a horse race and the slaughter of many wild beasts of all kinds. Indeed, 500 lions were used up in five days and 18 elephants fought against men in heavy armor. Some of these beasts were killed at the time and others a little later. They also were known to rig some of these games so they would be more exciting or entertaining to the people. You know, they might change the flooring of a particular person's starting battle point or give them a weapon that might be less than another person's weapon. They might uh, put someone in um, an environment where they have like only one way that they could survive and see if they figure it out. All of these uh, types of things to intensify or enhance the performance. And you know, the death usually was part of that, right? So anyway, I'm just saying it's been around reality TV in this more uh, extreme way for a long time, right? A bunch uh, of experiments. I know Andy Cohen likes to say that it's uh, a soap opera, but really it isn't a soap opera. It's an experiment. And you know, this is why we are so uh, preoccupied, like in the last few weeks with Vanderpump Rules, on what happened with Tom Sandoval, uh, Raquel Levis, and Ariana Maddox, because we want to know what happens 
in that could cause that? How is it that a guy could be with someone for nine years and then betray them so greatly that they would go for a good friend of theirs behind their back and hide it? We're like, okay, in this science experiment, what the hell would cause that? And we are dying to find out, (laughs) you know, um, maybe because we deep down inside have some betrayal. We want to see someone else go through. So we know we're not alone or we feel better about ourselves. I don't know how it all works, but needless to say, I bring all of this up for a point. I know it's a long one. And that is reality producers know our buttons, just like in the Greek and Roman days, and they press them and they do it at the reality stars or other celebrity that they create, because that's usually how these go, demise. And even if the person needs help after, they walk away because to them it's a business transaction and they sign a contract, as we will get into, that allows them to do whatever they want with no repercussions, much like in the Roman and Greek days. Because guess what? If you were a gladiator and you killed someone in battle, you were not prosecuted for that killing because they gave you a release before you would go into the arena. And you would sign a release saying that it was okay for you to die because of your crime. And my goodness, it has a lot of uh, parallels now that I'm thinking about it. So let's talk about what producers have admitted to doing on these reality shows. Anon, of course, because they're afraid they will lose their jobs if someone found out that they spilled this tea. Maybe that's because it's pretty damn dark. Let's get into it. For the full scoop, head to our Patreon page. Click the coin icon on your player to check it out. 